Hey guys, it's Jim. So we're here with part two, Zach Lentino, AKA Brother Jay in uh, Million Dollar Quartet. So, you know, we were talking a little bit uh, in part one about the bass and uh, you know, how'd you find this love of rockabilly? Because the cool thing is you don't see it in a lot of folks, mm -hmm. but man, I I'm a huge fan of it. And it's got such deep roots and there's so many cool, cool musicians that do it. Yeah, well, it, it, it really started um, with my dad. My dad's in a, a 50s and 60s rock and roll band called the Fabulous Ambassadors. And uh, they, if anyone is from the, the Chicagoland area, they might know the name Rick Sacito. He was one of the first what? ever Elvis tribute artists. And my dad started with him. They grew up together. He was his guitar player. And so I, I grew up watching my dad play that music and listening to my dad play that music. And then uh, my dad started showing me videos of Bill Haley. Oh. And that's my dad's favorite band. And his bass players, man, were crazy. They were wild guys. And, and I've always wanted to be a performer. And I, I, I saw Rockabilly and I, I realized like that's how I can combine the love of music and the love of performing. You know, it's not just about playing the right notes with Rockabilly. It's about having a good time. It's about letting other people have a good time. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's absolutely and it's a way of life. Like mm -hmm. you watch the dudes who are Rockabilly musicians. That, that just seems like that's the whole, they got that vibe when they walk on and mm -hmm. off the stage and have that feel to them. And, and you played a really cool band. So you played with a guy named Lance Lipinski, who was a million dollar down at the Apollo. Yeah. An extraordinarily talented piano player. Mm -hmm. And you played with him and the band The Levers. You've toured uh, internationally. You've done a really cool thing where uh, you guys got to be on uh, The Late Show with David Letterman. We did. And the other cool thing is, not only that week, you played like three, two or three nights with mm -hmm. them, which we'll talk about in a second, but you may be one of the only father and son teams that got to play that week because yeah. your dad's the Fabulous Ambassadors went out there as well. So how did that all come about? Man? You know, it, it, was, it was a whirlwind. Uh, my, my dad has actually been in contact with, the, had been in contact with The Late Show for a long time about doing just a week of Elvis music because da David Letterman was a huge Elvis fan and schedule just never, never lined up and then finally they, they worked it out and they called up my dad and said, hey, we want to do it. This is the week we want to do it. And his band was in South America that week. So he's like, well, we can't do it. But he was like, but I know this other band. You should contact the Lovers. And so he didn't even mention that we were father and son, but they looked us up and they, they really liked us. And they, they called me up. I handle a lot of the business end of the, the, the band. And they said, you know, we like you guys, but there's no videos of you playing Elvis music anywhere. Because, you know, we were just a general rockabilly band. Sure, we did yeah. a few... Elvis songs, but we weren't an Elvis band. Uh, and so we, we got together, we took uh, Brandon Bennett, who was the Elvis guy from the Chicago cast of the, in the Apollo of Million Dollar Quartet, and we recorded a fake concert. Um, <laughs> we, we just recorded little bits of each song on the stage there at the Apollo, and we sent it into them, and they're like, perfect, we love it. And they flew us out two days later. Now, um, I gotta ask, Number one, were they under the impression like, oh, this is a concert we did? They, they were. Nice. We, we, we kinda, well, we that's what we call marketing yep. in our world mm -hmm. on stuff. Dude. We put that's together perfect. just like, hey, this is, this is a promo. You know, this is our, our promo Elvis video. And they were like, great. We love it. Come on down. Now, did you work with Paul Schaefer and those guys? We did. And they gave you the music and everything else. So before you even get into Chicago, or you must be rehearsing before mm -hmm. you get there. Did they send you all that in advance? Well, we... Uh, we knew what songs were gonna ha were gonna be played, and we, we knew a lot of the Elvis guys just from playing different shows with right. them. And so we got to talk to them. We talked, you know, hey, how do you do this song? And really, a lot of it was up to us. And you know, Paul would, would give his input, and then we'd give some input back. It was actually a really cool collaborative effort with them. Um, What's it like working with Paul Schaefer? He's he, he's small but mighty, man. He, he's he's shorter than me. He's a very tiny guy, but man, when he walks in and he, he's looking around at a room, he just, he commands that room. Wow. He, you can tell, he's, he's done everything, he knows everyone, he's been everywhere. Right. So he, he's, he's a force to be reckoned with. So you're in the green room getting ready to go on the David Letterman show. At the time, I mean, David was the number one show. Yeah. What's going through in your mind when you're getting ready to go in front of millions and millions <laughs> and millions? Uh, well, fortunately, that was not going through our minds. Uh, at the time, it was just... Good thing I'm not in the band. Like, yeah, oh, right. Zach, we're going out with millions and millions. <laughs> no, it was, it was crazy because I, I, I had to leave a week of school. That was my first week back from, uh, from winter break. It was when we went back for, uh, it was when we went to David Letterman. It's so really, I'm just thinking like, 
all right, I gotta, we gotta get this done. I hope I don't mess up. I know people at school are watching me. That was all I was thinking about is, you know, I, I, my girlfriend at the time kept texting me. She's like, I can't wait to see you guys and all this stuff. So it was, it was really just exciting. And, and it, the third night was, was my last night. And I literally recorded, hopped in a taxi and went back to uh Because well, didn't you have to come back to do a play or do some kind I, of show? I now did. I, think we, I was in a, a musical at, um, at my college. It was called I Love a Piano. It was the works of Irving Berlin. So I had to fly back, had one rehearsal that night, and then did a show the next day. Wow. Yeah. And did you guys all get to meet Dave somewhere in between uh, the process you know, or not? He's a hard guy to meet. Yeah, I was uh, going to say, because a lot of people never get to see him. Yeah. Exactly. We all got to shake his hand right. uh, you know, on set, and he talked to us before and after the songs, and then, uh, then he was gone. So, yeah. And you played some really other cool cats, Michael Monroe Goodman. Yeah. Uh, and you uh, got to play with Bobby McFerrin. Right? Was that at Ravinia? I did. I got, I got to sing with him. How did that happen? Uh, that, that was through, through the college. You know, like I said, I, I studied voice there. I was right. in the choirs. And uh, we, we got contacted by Bobby, and he said, you know, we're doing this concert version of Porgy and Bess. And, uh, and we've seen, you know, Elmhurst College uh, concert choir work, and we love them. And we'd love for them to be the, the backing choir here. So us with um, the uh, Chicago Children's Choir, Oh, cool. Uh, teamed up. We, do, we did a lot of teamwork um, through the years. We got there, and that was another, you know, one rehearsal and then show type of thing. And wow. that was great. That, he's, he's a phenomenal musician, and he understands music like, like no one I've ever seen. That's what people talk about. He's just brilliant. Mm -hmm. Like, he knows, he knows it inside and out. Yep. And I hear he's just a cool guy to be around, too. So, and he's just got that vibe guy. about him. Yeah. Well, look, man, you are an extraordinarily talented cat as well. Thank and you, so, man. Uh, it's been nothing but a pleasure and so much fun to get to. I've seen the show three or four times now. Yeah. And it's amazing. Like, you walk out of there, and if, if you don't feel good about every ounce of your day <laughs> when you walk out, you're missing something. So <laughs> thank you for providing that kind of thing, especially thank in this you, time man. of day. You know, like, things are a little crazy in the world right now. So coming here for a couple hours and, and getting let go. And we keep telling people, hey, man, if you're trying to introduce your kids to musical theater oh, and yeah. just the great music of the time mm -hmm. of those amazing artists, like that's the time to come see it because you see kids all the time now in the audience, especially on the weekends. Oh yeah, right? all the time, and they, it's it's always the kids who, who want to stick around and, and try and meet the guys and, and tell them how much they loved it, and it's always them and their grandparents. You right. know, it's 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 really it's music that speaks to everyone, no matter what age you are. Well, keep an eye on Zach Lentino. We'll find a, a place to link out so you can see what his next coming project is. And look with him, uh, with Lance Lipinski and the Lovers as well. Man, uh, thank you so much for taking the time. We really appreciate it. Thank you, man.